Hey everybody, Brian Martin, the boss man, coming at you with uh, Michael Forrest, our top uh, shop tech. Everybody. Still working on the 389 ranch hand, but this time uh, it's visor time. You know, when you put that visor on the truck, that gives it its whole attitude. Yep. Then when the stacks go on, <laughs> that gives it its personality. Uh, but what we're going to do is something a little different. We took a, a stainless windshield trim and we painted it uh, our, our paint color here, our copper. And we're hoping that th that's going to have the effect of kind of an old school small windshield, small, windows, yep. uh, small window look. So uh, when we get the finished product, we'll stand back, look at it together and see if it was a hit or if it was a miss. Something else we're doing is our stainless ranch hand visor. Pretty narrow, I think we're, what did we say here? Four and a half in the center and seven and a half high at the outside. Seven and a half to four and a half bow tie. We're going to roll that thing forward probably where it uh, just barely shows a little bit of the windshield rubber in the center. Uh, because that's how a lot of little window yep. and, and 70s, yep. 80s Peterbilt 359s were. So really excited to see the visor go on the truck. We're going to film it. So the same technique you see here is probably going to work for... 90% of the Peterbilt visors we sell. We're not going to use the five cab brackets across the roof. We're just going to mount on each end and then one center bracket through the center windshield post. So really excited to see the finished product. I think this is going to give the truck the exact look we're after. That's right. It'll be, it'll look really sharp on there. All right. Well, let's take it over there and we can kind of get things rolling. All right. All right. So we're going to start today of putting on our windshield trim. And this trim is actually stainless steel. We had it painted ahead of time to make the windows look smaller, like an old style, small windowed peat. What we've got is a, a left cover, a right cover, and a center strip cover. And these just attach with double side tape on the back side. We've got to do a little bit of cleaning and prepping to the windshield rubber before we put this on. So I've cleaned this with a glass cleaner to get all the debris and residue off of it. Now I've got a little bit of adhesion promoter that I'm going to apply to this, and that'll make that adhesive tape and stick to this really really well all right so i'll get my trim get it positioned in here and get it adhered to the window so here i've got the driver's side window cover you can kind of tell because the angles here are sharper at this lower point because the window is laid back this direction and that direction they're not 90 degree angles like it was a house window so i want to just before i do anything just kind of fit it up here and get an idea of where on the rubber this will sit I want to cover as much of the black rubber as I can without it uh, hanging off the inside or outside excessively anywhere. And just nice and even for the most part. And there is a gap here in the center, which is fine because that center cover will cover both halves up here. So this here won't be visible. So now I've got a visual about where I need to set this. What I'm going to do is this red you see here is the backing on the adhesive tape. I don't want to peel all that off and try to set it up here because I could be off a little bit and once that whole piece is stuck, it's, it's just stuck there. I'll probably ruin it to get it off and try it again. So what I'm going to do is just pull off a little bit at each end, only exposing a small amount of the tape. Allow me to position everything before anything makes any hard contact or pressure. So I've got it just kind of lightly stuck up here in each of these corners, able to look at it and kind of check my gaps here. It's nice and even. There's not much that's not covered with it and it's not hanging off one side or the other. So now I'm going to go ahead and just, just pull the backing off from underneath here, one strip at a time. Get this last piece pulled out. All right, and I'm just gonna apply some pressure around the entire perimeter of that. All right, that is solid and in place. Now I'll go get the passenger side and we'll get it fixed. I'm trying to mimic the driver's side as far as how high and how tor close towards the centers and everything that it is. I'm using the uh, roof cap and rubber there kind of as a guide. That's what's at my eye level right here. I gotta tap that corner into place. Get that one tapped. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're meet up nicely here. Same gap on the center. Nice and even on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the top cover off from behind it. Apply some pressure around the entire perimeter. All right, that one's on there solid. All right, so here's our center cover for our windshield trim. As you can see, it'll set up here. It'll cover the gap between the left and the right half and make it look like a, a nice piece here. However, we are going to have our bow tie visor, which has a center bracket that goes in between the windshields. And it's going to bolt right to here at about, about this high up. So I'm going to not put the center strip on until I have a visor mounted. And then I'll cut the center strip cover to go from the bottom of the window trim just up to the bottom of the center bracket. It's pointless to have any more of it up here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get our visor prepped and get it ready to fit and install. So here's our bow tie visor that we're gonna install. It's obviously a two piece. We got a left half, right half, and there's our center mount that's gonna bolt in between the windshields. And there's these tabs here that'll go attach to each half of this and sandwich our center bracket in between it. All right, so now I'm gonna mount all our pieces together. I'm gonna use some anesthes on the stainless hardware. It'll help to ensure that we don't have a bolts seized to the nuts we'll put them together. I'm just gonna have these kind of lightly snugged up for the time being. That'll allow a little bit of room for this bracket to move and pivot as necessary to match the windshield. All right, so now our visor is loosely assembled. Now I need to go over to the truck and get it ready to fit the visor up here. The visor mounts in these two holes right here. And on the truck, these two holes right now, I've got the upper mirror brackets hucked into the cab on them. So I'll need to go to the truck, remove the mirror bracket, and put threaded inserts into those holes. That way I can actually bolt the visor to the cab, putting the mirror bracket back over this part of the visor. The first thing I need to do is unbolt the mirror post from the bracket on the cab. All I have to do to remove that is to remove this one bolt on here. And next I'll start grinding away at the heads of these hucks. I'm gonna get it down to a pretty low profile, and I'll just finish by drilling them out the rest of the way. It's, these are very hard and it's difficult to drill them, so the less I have to drill, the better. Now I've got my bracket removed from the cab. There's a protective plastic piece here to remove also. Now what I need to do is oversize these holes to 13 30 seconds and put a threaded insert in each one of these holes. A little steel bar with a bolt in it. This here is quarter inch in this case. And cordless impact works great. You can do it with a ratchet, a socket, or even just a wrench. So we'll just insert that into the hole all the way and then just slowly tighten it up little bits at a time until it feels like we're unable to turn our bar clockwise. Right. Now we go do the other side. So I've got the nut search installed on both sides of the cab under the mirror brackets. The next step will be to prepare the center of the window for the center mount. And I won't know where that is until I fit the visor up here on the cab. So I'm putting tape up here on the center of the windshield trim. And that'll do two things. One, it'll protect the paint from the bracket banging against it while we're getting it put up here. But also, I won't be able to get a marker or pin right through the mounting holes with that bracket. So I'm going to have to kind of trace the outline of the bracket onto this tape where it's going to position itself on here. Then I'm going to have to pull the visor off. I'll take the bracket and put it back over my outline and then mark my holes and drill them through this windshield post. Now this windshield frame has got a steel beam right in the center of it in between the glass. So I'm going to drill right in between those and I'll be in that steel beam. There won't be pressure put against the glass. It'll be just be on the steel beam inside. I'm going to drill a 3 16 hole through each of these. I'm going to insert a 1024 machine screw from the inside out. That'll make it much easier to get a screwdriver inside the cab. 
think I'm going to take this opportunity to measure how long my center strip cover needs to be. Coming off the center point, it's like I'm at 16 and 5 eighths of an inch. I'll write that down for a moment. And that's what I'll cut my center strip cover for. It'll come up to here. The visor will cover everything up to there. So there's no need to add a piece up on top also. Let me go ahead and remove the tape. Clean this debris out of here and I'll put some silicone around these holes so I don't get water passing through to the center of the windshield here. Now I'll go to the inside and I'll push the screws from the inside out. All right, so here's our two machine screws that I fed from the inside of the cab outward. I'm gonna put our center bracket over it. Again, I'm gonna do this just loosely to allow the, the visor to move where it needs to to get my bolts lined up and, and get the visor fitted properly. And before I can put the visor on here, I'm gonna have to oversize the holes in these mirror brackets. These were installed with just a 3 16 huck, so it has a 3 16 hole through here. But we're gonna be mounting the visor with quarter inch bolts. So I'll need to drill these holes out to a quarter inch or probably even slightly larger so that our mounting bolts can go through this, through the visor, and into the threaded inserts we put in. So before I put the visor up here, I wanna go ahead and put some silicone sealant inside these holes. Now we're ready to mount our visor. First thing we'll have to do when we set it on here is make sure that we get that center bracket to go in between the halves of these plates in the center. And I can put a bolt through our mirror bracket, through the visor, and into the cab. And I'm not gonna get that tight yet. I'm gonna make sure that we get both ends started and get a bolt into the center bracket. All right, so we've gotta be moved down here a little bit. All right, you can see we had to move that a pretty decent amount to get the holes to line up so that's why we got to keep our stuff loose until we're mounting it for the final time now I'll probably do first is go ahead and tighten up the center bracket and then I'll do the ends all right all right so now I've got somebody on the inside of the truck with a screwdriver I've got my wrench out here I'm gonna tighten this up just snug we don't need to make this as tight as it can possibly go. We don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on the windshield post. That's good. All right. Now, that's solid. I'm going to tighten up those two bolts there. Now it's mounted. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the bolts in the end of the mirror brackets. And also, get our mirror bracket attached to our mirror arm. And that side's solid. All right. Our mirror's solid. Visor is solid. I'm gonna go finish up our window trim now. All right, so remember we're gonna cut our center strip cover, which was one piece from top to bottom. It's gonna cut it from the bracket, the center support bracket of the visor down to the bottom. But after we got this visor on here, we can see that there's a little bit of it exposed up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a section for the bottom and then cut another section for the top so that from straight on, this entire gap is covered, except for the bit underneath of the center bracket. So let me go ahead and double check my measurements. Yeah, I've still got my 16 and 5 eighths here. Now for the top one, it's like I've got right at about two and an eighth up there. So I'll get our center strip, mark it, and cut a section out of the middle and affix the top and affix the bottom. Now since these ends are V'd in and V'd out at the top and the bottom, now they cut my section out of the center of it. So coming from the bottom, I have a 16 and 5 eighths. And from the top, I had two and one eighth. Let me put a straight line across that. I'm gonna cut this end off. There's a top piece. Remove our section where the bracket sits. All right, now let's take these over the truck and get these installed. All right, so once again, I want to clean up our mounting surface really well. Make sure that that tape has a clean surface to adhere to. I'm not near as concerned about the adhesion promoter on this paint and metal it's a lot 
better to uh, adhere to than the rubber. All right, I'm gonna start with the lower section, the main one. Once again, I'm just peeling off some of the backing so I can fit it in position and then remove the backing out of there. To there. Main thing I wanna look at here is the bottom of where this center cover mates up with the side covers. I wanna make sure I get it centered left and right and also have the bottom edge flush with, with both sides as best as possible. I'm gonna stick the top and hold it. Now pull the backing off. And now this side. And apply some pressure to it. Great. And now the top one, this one's so short that I'll have a difficult time trying to peel a little bit back. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing entirely. I'm sure it'd have that V notch at the top. It'll match the way that the two halves come together. You know, centering it left and right as good as possible and matching the tops up as best I can. All right, and that one's stuck. There. Now we have the illusion of having a one piece cover through here. And our windows look smaller, seeing that we're not seeing the rubber trim on the edge. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the plastic coating on the visor, clean up the visor and clean up the windshields, and then we'll uh, see how it looks. All right, here we go, guys. We've got our visor mounted. We've got our painted windshield trim on. Really gave this truck some personality, a really mean look. It's going to look killer going down the road.